If you've been paying attention to the news, you may have seen some worrying headlines pop up over the last week or so. Headlines such as, 2018 is going to be the worst year on record for major earthquakes, or you better dig out an earthquake bunker because you're definitely all going to die. That last one was an exaggeration, but you get the idea. In a recent conference, scientists from the universities of Montana and Colorado did present groundbreaking work related to earthquake prediction, but it might not be as dramatic as the headlines make it out to be. The crust of the earth is broken up into massive fragments called called tectonic plates, where these plates meet, and within the plates there are cracks, called faults. Because the pieces of the Earth are constantly moving in different directions, when different sides of a fault get stuck on each other and then move suddenly, you get a huge release of energy. That's an earthquake. And we all know how devastating earthquakes can be, causing damage to buildings and people and all kinds of things. So it's not surprising that we want a reliable way to predict when and where they're going to happen. The more time we have to prepare, the better. But it's really hard thing to do. Which brings us to this research. Two geologists who published their study in August noticed that there was a weird pattern to big earthquakes, about 7.0 or bigger on the Richter scale. The Richter scale is the international numerical scale for how strong an earthquake is. Basically, the higher the number, the more you feel it. Since the year 1900, they found that big earthquakes seem to happen more often worldwide every 30-ish years or so, like about 25 times a year instead of 15 times a year. And weirdly, they found that these waves of big earthquakes may be correlated to patterns in the Earth's rotation. Now, the Earth's rotation isn't constant. The moon and gravity and other factors can slow it down by tiny amounts. And these researchers found that right after several periods when the Earth's rotation got slower, intense earthquakes happened more often. And they think it might be because the Earth's crust is sitting on top of molten lower layers, so as the planet's rotation slows a bit, the insides slosh around. Like, think about a cup of coffee in your car when you hit the brake. Similar idea. It takes about five years for everything to sort of even out, and during that time, energy might build up near faults. And that might be bad for the stability of the crust and mean more big earthquakes. Or at least, that's a possible explanation these researchers propose. Seismology is a super tricky science, and it's filled with uncertainty. The scientists point out that there's still a lot of discussion within the community about what might cause a correlation between the Earth's rotation and big earthquakes. And even though the last slowing down of the Earth started in 2011, which was more than five years ago, they're not predicting that 2018 is going to be apocalyptic. Based on the data from the last 100 years, a bad year for earthquakes might be a little more likely to happen, but that doesn't mean it's definitely going to. Which should probably be like seismology's motto. Because even though statistics and computer models have helped researchers predict a lot of things, earthquakes are ridiculously tricky. We don't even entirely understand all the things that might cause faults to start building up energy. But this week, researchers published more data to suggest that we might be partly to blame, at least for earthquakes in certain regions, like the central United States. Now, this is not a new idea. Scientists have been looking at this particular part of the U.S. and its increase in earthquakes since 2009. Studies from 2012 showed that earthquake frequency could be linked with natural gas extraction and wastewater injection, where unwanted chemical-filled water from extraction processes is put back into the ground. The researchers suggested that these practices could change the pressure in naturally occurring pockets of gas between chunks of crust in the central U.S. and make the ground shift to compensate. They came up with these ideas using statistical models, basically plugging in where earthquakes and drilling were happening, and boom, correlation. I mean, it's a bit more complicated than that, but the point is, no one had really looked at the rocks until now. The scientists who published the paper last week used what's known as seismic reflection data to map the Earth's crust in some of the known hot spots in the central U.S. Seismic reflection is a technique kind of like sonar, where researchers use special instruments to send vibrations through kilometers of rock below them. Basically, these vibrations get reflected back towards the receivers on the Earth's surface and give you information about what's down there. It can be used to find things like natural gas and oil deposits, but seismologists and geophysicists use it to get an idea of what sort of rock is below the surface and how old it is based on how deep it is and how intact the layers are. When the scientists used recorded data to take a closer look at some of the faults in the central U.S., they found that some of the faults seem like they've been actively shifting for millions of years, while others weren't really until you guessed it people started messing with the crust have we learned nothing from all of the sci-fi disaster movies this never ends well Paul Giamatti is in a room somewhere warning you. For these scientists, this is evidence that this correlation between human activity and earthquakes is more likely. Sometimes, with statistical models, it's hard to be sure. And now that someone's actually checked out the rocks, maybe we can start to do something about this increase in tiny quakes. Announcement! Uh, you may have heard about this already, but the SciShow team and I have decided to do a thing. We often 
aren't sure what to do when people ask us what we want for Christmas. And so we say, ah, oh, man, I don't know. And then they get annoyed with us. So I like to get certain things. I buy things for myself. And if people give me things that I really like, I like it. <laughs> So the spirit of Christmas. So I put together six things and we got limited quantities of each of the things and we put them on a new website called SciShow Finds. The idea is you can send somebody there and they can buy you any of the things that exist and they will all be cool science-y artifacts of this universe that will either let you experiment on yourself or learn or like sort of just embody your love of the natural world. Uh, we've sold out of like half of the things already. So it's not all there anymore, but some of it still is. You can go to scishowfinds.com and see all that stuff. Uh, and if you send people there to buy you stuff or if you buy stuff there, just know that you are helping to support SciShow.